Hi, Connect Groups, and... Happy Valentine's Day! What did you say? <laughs> yeah, happy Valentine's Day from all the Minics. The girls are uh, heading to the front door to get ready for um, the bus to come. Uh, so, girls, go get all your stuff together. We're in Deuteronomy 6. We're talking about family and worship. And last time, our video was like 10 minutes long, so I'll make up the difference today and keep it super, super <coughs> short. Uh Rosie the dog says happy Valentine's Day also. One of the things that Deuteronomy 6 is really interesting is that is that we can break it down into the different pieces um, and analyze, hey, yeah, there's specific things God wants us to do in our home, teaching the commandments and uh, doing so all the time everywhere. Or maybe we can step back and just take it as the whole and say, uh, what does God really kind of in a big way trying to communicate and that's simply this that God's interested in our life being a whole life that involves uh, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ in the moment so when I talked about hey I you know pray over the kids before we go to school and we you know pray that the Holy Spirit will fill us and, and those fruits will be evident uh, I'm also wanting to impart to the kids you know do that while you're in school. So when you're under anxiety, when you're under a moment of stress or someone hurts your feelings, take a deep breath and then pray, Lord, fill me with your spirit of, you fill in the blank, self-control or faithfulness, and so that it becomes a daily practice. Uh, so I want to include uh, not just those who have children, but all of us as adults, <clears throat> as, as uh, you know, followers of Jesus Christ, that in your own your cubicle today uh, at work or you're in your office uh, setting or your parking garage before you go in just to pray and stay in that atmosphere of prayer and and in so doing you know teach those around you uh, who are in your circle of life so maybe even your connect group uh, you know it's it's not that we have to designate a time to pray <clears throat> we can pray in the moment we can pray for people while they're telling us their story we can quietly be praying for them or we can just pause at the end of their story and they've unloaded their burden and say, I, I just want to pray right now. Holy Spirit, fill me and, and, and give me the words to pray. And so rather than say, I'll pray for you later, uh, or I'll put that on a prayer list, which are all fine, uh, I think this uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 is alerting us that God wants us to be aware of his presence and interacting with faithfulness uh, all throughout the day. When we rise, when we go to bed. Uh, and and when we're on the road and when we're in our house, that he's very um, aware of our need for him. So he's prescribing a way for us to have access to him. And worship is that front door access when we acknowledge who he is by praising him, declaring how great he is. We can do that with exuberance and high energy songs, just uplifted hands and dance and jump. Or we can um, do that in quiet and subtle ways. Both are acceptable and, and both actually work together. And you'll find often as you lift up the name of the Lord on high with an exuberant way, you can worship him uh, then in a quiet setting. And sometimes that quiet setting will, will take you right back to the high energy and exaltation. So he's very dynamic and very, uh, I guess, invitational. And so again, uh, as I close... Do not take anything that I said as a, as a way of, of con condemning or bringing guilt to our life if we have not exercised a lot of faith in our home and in our relationships. No. Romans 8 says there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Not one bit of condemnation. As we go forward, now we have an opportunity, a responsibility, an awareness, an invitation to engage with God throughout the day as a life of worship. So I'm encouraging you to discuss that with one another, practical ways that you've done that, or if you haven't done it, uh, you know, share, share a, a, a moment and say, can someone pray for me? I need courage in this area. You have a moment of, of vulnerability. I, 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 need, I need some help. I'm really afraid about this. I don't know if I'll stumble and fall and, and take that time to pray one for another and encourage one another uh, so that when the next moment arises, by faith we will seize it and say, let's pray right now. Family, let's gather and read the word. Let's linger at the table and talk about Jesus and pray one for another. Have a great and exciting and uplifting and encouraging 
time together. God loves you, and so do we. Have a good night.